In this video, I'm going to be explaining why three of these trebuchets is ten times better than one. Welcome to another Battle Games in Middle-Earth tutorial video, this time all about siege engines. Now forget Time of the Orc, with the Middle-Earth strategy battle game rules update it is now definitely time for siege engines galore. Now, I remember the great bit in The Return of the King, the Battle of Minas Tirith, when it's the Siege of Gondor and the trebuchets are suddenly flying, letting loose, all that sort of stuff. And as soon as I wanted to play the Middle Earth strategy battle game, or back then, the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game, I picked up one of these models and it was like the best thing. It's so cool, it's the trebuchet and it's got all these, these guys in it and, all the, and, and everything. It was just so awesome. But then you play the game and you go, you know what? That's a bit disappointing. But now, the new siege rules mean that these guys are so much scarier than they used to be. Don't know very much about siege engines? This is the video for you, and before I explain why three of these is infinitely better than having just one on the battlefield, let's take you through a few of the siege rules first of all. So first of all, if you're deploying a siege engine, you don't have to follow the usual rules of the scenario. So if you're playing board halves and you, you, sometimes you could end up with stuff in the middle of the board, ignore that. Always with a siege weapon, you're within six inches of the edge of your own board edge. So that's even in Maelstrom of battle missions where you all come on from random board edges, which is great because it means you get to shoot in the very first turn rather than dragging your siege weapon on the board. On the downside, it does mean that some random orcs or wags, as you can see here, uh, can turn up behind you and scupper your plans entirely. So watch out for that. It's also worth noting, for some reason, some people seem to think that siege engines always deploy first, but it's only in Maelstrom of Battle ones where they have to deploy before everything else. The rest of the time, you could, if you really want to, deploy your siege engine last. So there's basically two types of siege weapons. The ones that cause splash damage, like your, your trebuchets, your Mordor war catapults, and your Iron Hills ballista, and also the pokey holy siege engines, like your Urukai ballista, your Orc ballista, your Dwarf ballista, and then there are other kind of weird siege engines like the Windlance and the uh, Avenger Bolt Thrower, which basically are more like um, really super strong archers. So the main two ones, pokey holy ones and splash damage ones. That's before we Again, get into those trebuchet uh, tactics. Let's find out exactly a little bit more about the details of splash damage and pokey holy trebuchet shots. So we've got our siege engine, the Urukai Ballista, which is going to shoot some pokey holy shots at these Rohan Royal Guard over here on the middle of the field. So it's pretty simple, it just needs to draw a line of sight, which it can do, nothing in the way at the moment. Then we roll to see if we hit, and we do hit, that's a nice hit. And then a, see if we scatter, that's the next step, something slightly different compared with uh, normal shooting. So that's a five, so a good result. One is a bad result, six is obviously the best result, so I'll explain those first. On a one, you may end up accidentally hitting anyone who happens to be nearby, like this little Urukai fella uh, who appeared out of the darkness. So uh, it basically it's the, the person you're shooting at, it's their choice where it goes, within six inches. So this guy would be in trouble if we rolled a one. He's not, because we didn't roll a one. Um, but on a two, three, four, and a five, the good person does hit, or the person shooting the trebuchet does hit someone in the cluster of people that you're you expecting to hit. So say I've targeted Gambling, which was who I was aiming for. I don't want to, uh, if I'm the Rohan player, I don't want to have Gambling hit. So I'm going to choose someone else, maybe this guy. So that's what's going to happen. Uh, as long as they're within six inches, uh, the player who's being shot at can choose anyone to be the fall guy. So a standard tactic is, if you're facing siege weapons, to always have some poor soul uh, hovering a bit further away from everyone else like that. So, you know, if you're going to hit this guy or gambling, uh, then on a two, three, four and a five, you can have this guy take the, take the pounding. So that's what's going to happen. So uh, 
that's what we'll do. But because we've got this little uh, uh, this little fella here uh, in the cluster, well, maybe do it a little bit more interesting if they're in the cluster, because I want to show you how these work. So that's the five. So he's going to get hit. So basically, he takes a big old strength nine hit, and that's the case with all of the ballistas. So it's a pretty powerful, uh, powerful shot. There we go. That will kill him outright. But because he's strength five or lower, so if you're strength six or above, so trolls and things like that, this, this won't affect them. But if you're strength five or lower, you get flung back D6 inches before you die. That's a big solid two inches. Not great, but perfect for this example. So he's going to go back two inches, bish, bash, bosh, in a straight line from the weapon. So bing, bing. So it's going to hit this guy. And uh, what happens is he gets thrown over and anyone he passes over during his uh, flying, uh, flying sequence takes a strength six hit. That's pretty good, right? Strength six hit on a Rohan Royal Guard. Oh, I've lost my dice. A three, so no damage, but hey, it's worked quite well. So that's that's one of the samples. We've killed this guy, we've knocked that guy over. Effective siege weapon shot, yeah, yeah, not, not too bad. Um, and if you've got the new um, the new Rohan uh, Legion, you'll be able to reroll scatters and hits with this guy, I believe. So the other choice, I just want to quickly sample because this is a main siege engine rule is if I did go for uh, him. Uh, which I wanted to do, I'd have to roll in the ways for this kind of uh, uh, siege weapon. Volley fire rules are an exception, but normal in the ways do apply with this bow. So uh, he shoots in there, he's going through these two people, let's rig it. So he miss hits the first, uh, goes through the first guy, he goes through the second guy, and he hits Gambling. Gambling is going to be in trouble. Now this is if, uh, if we got a direct hit on that six, of course, for the first one to shoot. So Gambling is taking the strength nine hit. Now, this is going to be pretty worrying for him because he gets wounded and he's going to be in trouble because a siege weapon insta-kills heroes. This is a big deal. This is why siege engines are so worth having. And especially if you've got the siege engine uh, veteran who gets one point of might to maybe bump that, uh, that direct hit up to a six, things like that. So if you've got a five on the scatter, get it up to a six, you get that direct hit. So now Gambling's in trouble. All he needs to do is fail his fate, which he doesn't, uh, and then he will die and be removed from the game, despite having having quite a few wounds left. So there you go. That's how devastating siege weapons can be, uh, in particular these, this ballista one. But what about ones that cause splash damage rather than flinging people back? Let's have a look at my wonderful, wonderful trebuchet. <laughs> So let's take a look at how the Gondor Battle Cry Trebuchet works. I love the Battle Cry element of the name. Uh, so basically, it's got a 12 to 96 inch range, so it can shoot uh, pretty far, but it also you've got to be wary about uh, shooting things close to you. It's got a minimum range as well. Uh, it doesn't need line of sight, so this hill. It's blocking the line of sight to these orcs that are hiding really far away. Uh, that would block the line of sight for normal stuff, but uh, because I've got a guy on top who's uh, looking out for the trebuchet team, as long as I've got line of sight with someone on the battlefield to my intended target, then I'll be able to shoot them uh, absolutely fine. So let's uh, see how the trebuchet works. Let's fire it away. So it misses this time. Next time. Next time. We'll get there, there we go. So three turns uh, it takes to hit, finally hit. So by this point, the orcs would be a bit further forward, of course, but uh, we're aiming for this guy, the captain in the corner there. So simple, as with the, uh, with the normal, uh, with the, uh, the previous siege engine, you've got to scatter that dice as well. So hopefully we don't get one. We do get a two though, that's fine. So again, within six inches of, of this guy, uh, someone will get struck. So as the orc player, I'm gonna choose well, let's say I don't really know much about siege engines. Let's go with this guy. So he gets smacked in the head. So what does it? Ha what happens? We've got for this guy, it's a strength ten hit, or is it strength nine? Strength ten. Strength ten hit on that guy, which means he's just smashed into the ground outright. Bam! He's dead. He's he's got no chance. So he's dead. But now, as we mentioned, we've got splash damage, which is the most exciting bit. So we see who's within two inches of this guy in the middle there. So guess who? 
pretty much everyone. So all of that, that lot are all gonna take a strength five hit each, which is pretty, pretty, pretty nice, pretty nasty. So let's do all the four five orcs, sorry, first of all. So we've got five orcs. So, oh, look at that. We've got one orc dead and four are knocked prone. Now, it does say in the book uh, for the Mordor War Catapult that they're not knocked prone, or it doesn't say that they are or aren't. Uh, there is an FAQ that confirms that they are. So, those four guys are knocked prone, as with the trebuchet and also with the uh, Iron Hills Ballista as well. So, these four guys, uh, let's say we kill that one, these four guys are knocked over. Now, we've got the captain as well. So, captain takes a strength five hit as well. He's absolutely fine. He's also knocked over. And just worth noting that the splash damage doesn't kill uh, the heroes outright. So if I had wounded him, uh, even though he gets fate points, he wouldn't uh, uh, he wouldn't die straight away, even if he just failed one of those fate points. So that's what I love about a trebuchet. Look at the disruption caused. Not only has this one shot killed uh, two orcs, which is you know ten points, it's also delayed them by half a turn because these guys are going to have to spend the next turn getting up and then moving again, and then they might even get splashed again. So uh, the, obviously the sensible thing to do is, if you're a uh, Orc player, is rather than uh, taking the hit just like that, uh, you go, oh no, I'm playing against siege weapons, so I'm going to have what I call the Fall Guy, poor old soul. So he's going to stay separate from the line, perhaps even a bit further back, well, he certainly will be eventually. Uh, and then he's going to take the hit because everyone within six inches, as long as there's everyone's within six inches of him, we're okay. So he'll take that damage. And as long as there's two inches away, no splash damage call. So it'll just be one. So make sure you remember that. Uh, dear, dear, dear uh, opponents taking on siege damage. So there you go. That is the general gist of siege engines. There are a few exceptions to the rule. Defense 10 models, they all uh, they don't get insta-killed, and uh, uh, the mummer kill, which is a siege target, doesn't get uh, insta-killed either. Uh, but there are a few exceptions, but that's the general gist. Now, there's a couple more little things that I'm going to have to go and mention first. Oh. So we mentioned earlier about the issues that potentially can befall you if you've got the uh, maelstrom of battle deployment. So, uh, as we mentioned earlier with the or Uruks, uh, sorry, the Wargs riding in and um, causing all sorts of problems, uh, these guys have somehow managed to slog their way up the pitch despite having uh, had a few killed already. So what's going to happen uh, now? So we've got this guy here, this Orc. So it's say uh, say the Orcs have won the movement phase or uh, he's uh, won priority and he's called a heroic move or something. These guys are going to engage the teams. So uh, this guy is going to go into that guy, that guy is going to go into that guy, and this poor fella is going to get the... Uh, the rest of the uh, the rest of the charge. So there we go. So we've got a whole uh, team of orcs attacking all the siege veterans. But this guy, who somehow managed to sneak around the other side, just walks into the, touch the siege engine. You don't need to have bases for siege engines. This is the thing that I see a lot. You don't need bases because it actually says in the rules touch the siege engine to dismantle it, and that's what we're going to do. These guys are busy fighting, so that means that they can't do anything uh, to do about this guy and as long as this guy spends a whole turn in base contact with it he gets to dismantle it so he moved in in his move phase which means that's uh, he has to wait until the end of his next turn before it's dismantled so he spends this turn in, in the whole turn here in in, in combat with it uh, he, these guys have their fights they maybe kill that one uh, and uh, they kill that one and eventually they kill that one uh, so the next turn comes uh, he's got to stay there for the next turn and then we've got to launch the attacks into here, uh, and then again we've got uh, we've got some good stuff going on because that means this by the end of this phase, this poor soul has chopped through the uh, the ropes or or hacked away at the trebuchet, and it is completely dismantled. And from then on, it's completely useless, and the siege veterans can now move further away from it because until then they'd have to spend the whole game within six inches of the uh, trebuchet. It can move them, um, but it, it requires all of them to move it, and it moves at half speed, so you can't shoot it. But with a range of 12 and 96, there's not a lot of points. So you might as well uh, might as well end up just uh, sticking in the corner and then waiting until you get demolished. But now, as I've mentioned, the whole point of this video was why should you have three rather than one, and how come it's so much better? 
Here is the explanation in a second. So there you go, there's the basic seed rules. That's how we're using it in the game. There may be a few little bits and bobs that I've missed, but do ask me questions below, uh, and also check out page 114 and 15 of the rule book, and you'll be able to finish off uh, understanding a little bit of the finer details and the nuances. And of course, each profile is slightly different, so the strength of the, the shot can be a little, little variant. Uh, but usually it's about the same, and most of the time they're hing on fours, unless you're the Mordor Siege bow. Poor old Mordor Siege bow. So, with that in mind, why should you have three trebuchets as opposed to one? Now, it may seem like a bit sort of going, going too hard into it and having too many of uh, something that, you know, was going to basically be a bit of a point sink. But here, is the, here are the main reasons for doing that. One, trebuchets are cheap as chips. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, 80 points and you get a trebuchet that can insta-kill things on a four plus, I mean, why, why wouldn't you want more than these things? Um, but two, it's about that poor old scatter. Let's go back to the table and find out a little bit more about why I want three trebuchets. So we've got our trebuchet there in the center, a second trebuchet right there in the corner, and in what will now be called standard deployment for three trebuchets, we've got a third trebuchet in this corner. Over in the distance, we've got the Orcs of Mordor, which include uh, a Captain and uh, three Wargs, Gothmog, and six Orcs. So actually around the same points value for uh, uh, for this little kind of weird mathematical ba ba battle report that we're trying to do here. So what we've got, I've done the maths. If you've got a, a four plus hit from this guy, which you do have, uh, strength nine, and you're usually going to be wounding on threes unless something's defense eight. So pretty rare that you're going to be attacking stuff like that. Um, maybe if you're attacking heroes or, or Iron Hills dwarves or something like that. But so that means, uh, in, including a one in six chance of missing completely with the scatter, uh, you've got a chance of 27.8% chance of wounding uh, something uh, every turn with the main shot. That doesn't include the splash damage, which these orcs are going to be victim to if they stick in this kind of uh, uh, setup. And um, I suppose there's, there's this guy here. But So say, for example, 27.8%. So over two turns, you're going to kill half uh, of a person, maybe well, 0.56, um, and over four turns you're guaranteed to kill one guy, logically, and that's just bad, that's going to be bad luck if you do that, because by four turns you've got your, you've got this army here, haven't you, you've already got your army on the doorstep, that's just one trebuchet, so let's apply logic to that, and so you've got three doing that, so then that means you've got three guys gone, that makes, that makes, that makes pretty much, pretty much good sense in four turns. So, you know, that's good. So we've got 1.67 per two turns with three shooting. So that's that's a good start. So that is, you, you know, actually, when you think about that, that's not bad, three turns of shooting, but for 240 points, hmm. Where it comes into its own is you've got a, uh, you've got a chances of scattering directly into this guy. This is where you want to pay your points for. So you've got a might point on each of these trebuchets. Each, so that means you've got three trebuchets each with a one in three chance of directly hitting him. So if you think what I'm saying, one in three, so you've got a, a, on a roll of a six, you direct hit the guy. On a roll of a five, you can spend a point of might and you direct hit the guy. And then suddenly you've got a guaranteed chance of knocking this guy off his warg, which as you know, very much is a valuable, valuable thing in a game of middle earth strategy battle game. So that's why I think the trebuchets are amazing. You've got a huge chance of killing that guy uh, in the in the in the first turn. So it's about I think it's about half and half. If you go for him, uh, you've got a half and half chance of taking him off his wild and causing some serious damage, which is a good roll. It's a good roll. And then and then the big thing uh, that I love about this is, say for example, these guys all go to try and disable this, or they go for an objective over here, for example over to this end of the board. And then these guys are going, well, I've got to go all the way over that end of the board. Now you've got a split up army. So unless there's objectives, of course, um, that's, a, that's a really, really disadvantageous thing to be doing. But the reason they do this is because they want to take out this trebuchet and this trebuchet. So my strategy, my strategy of three trebuchets is already working. And what's even better about this, they think if there's just one trebuchet in the corner, these guys are hovering around here thinking, this is fine and dandy because you know what? You can't hurt me here because you can't. They can't, it's a tw minimum, minimum 12 inch range and you're not gonna be able to do any damage from this guy. So uh, the great thing about this strategy is, while this guy is 
sort of sitting around going, damn, I can't shoot them. He can go, oh, hold on, I can shoot these guys over here. And meanwhile, while this guy can't shoot these guys, he can go, hmm, I might shoot these guys. So suddenly you've got that extra turn or two, um, potentially of combat or of shooting, which can make all that difference, especially after three or four turns slogging up the board, taking a few rocks to the face. And obviously you're never gonna have an army with just trebuchets. So, you know, you, you might max out on, with Denethor and some cheap uh, Minas Tirith troops to just get that advantage. And by the time you, they, they, the lines collide, you've got a really big advantage in your favor. This is why I love the Minas Tirith trebuchet army, especially if there's gonna be three of them. So there you go, guaranteed kills if you've got three trebuchets. Uh, 1.67 wounds in two turns if you've got three trebuchets. So obviously it depends what you're killing, what you fancy killing. You know, orcs, you might even guarantee yourself about uh, eight points worth of orc. Hmm, maybe there's a flaw in my plan here. No, 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 I'm, not, I'm joking. Obviously you wouldn't use it at 240 points uh, on their own, especially because it's actually illegal. But at 800 points plus, Maybe even still then. 900, 1,000, yes, yes, we're talking perfect. This is the perfect time to have them. Because that time is, is where you're maxing out the chances of killing people like Aragorn. Three trebuchets, 240 points. Aragorn, 240 points. Big deal. Uh, Sauron, three trebuchets, take him out. Take him off the board. Take him off, because the more bigger stuff, the more chance you get that big thing, and it's well worth the, the extra effort, I think. That's what I believe anyway. Um, and also, think the disruption, as I've shown in the last video, uh, just move the, the fact that people have to spread their lines out. People have to uh, divide up and send three or four wags to, to attack one uh, trebuchet, a couple to the, attack the other, and then suddenly you're realising, hold on, there's six or seven guys that um, are, are perhaps not focusing on the main thrust of the force and your trebuchets aren't going to score any objectives but they're going to stop other people from scoring objectives by distracting them so imagine assassinate someone say you know in early in the turn it's a capture and control or something like that or a domination match and there's there's objectives that are left right at the back you can be threatening that for the whole game the whole game taking away that that sort of objective lords of battle perfect you've got three models amazing that's, that's, that's a kill. Every, every so, so often there's three models sat in the back corner that you can't really kill very easily unless you send lots of people in and I'm chucking rocks at you all the time. That's why I think three trebuchets is absolutely the way forward. Maybe even two Mordor catapults with trolls. Hmm. Two trolls, two catapults. Now that is sounding very, very tasty. So I hope you enjoyed this slightly uh, uh, tongue-in-cheek look at, uh, at the siege rules. So hopefully you've actually learned something about siege rules, first of all. Uh, and secondly, uh, given you a bit of food for thought about my little bit of a trebuchet tactic. I will be trying out the trebuchet tactic, I promise you. I'm going to be playing a big tournament in, uh, in Ripon in Yorkshire very, very soon. And you'll be able to catch up a bit on the Entmoot podcast if you're interested in listening to that. You can find out all about the Entmoot podcast in the description below. And you can also support the uh, channel on Patreon. Uh, Patreon's kind of a crowdfunding thing. You chip in your support and you get to request a video. You get to see what you fancy. Uh, recently I had Benny, who uh, was one of the Patreon supporters. I gave him a Saruman painting tutorial because that's what he wanted. So that's what he gets. Uh, and I've also been encouraged by others to do some more tutorial-based content. So here it is. That's what I've been doing. Uh, a little bit of Siege tutorials, but, you know, Bit of, bit of a kind of sideways glance uh, at it using the uh, trebuchets as an example. So there you go, three trebuchets, pff, 10 times better than one. Thanks for watching.